Now you see why we Mindorans are such a proud people. We have something to be proud of. Well, you certainly do. From here, it's absolutely beautiful. King Leopold I, one of my ancient ancestors, designed the city of Marienstein. He stood on this hilltop, and using his saber to draw in the dirt, he sketched out the streets and parks and marketplaces. He must have been an amazing man. Yes, he was. And he was a strong ruler. That's what our country needs now. Are you saying that Raymond isn't a strong ruler? Well, he is no Leopold I. On the contrary, I think that Raymond is capable of anything. Megan, he is blind. I haven't heard of many blind warriors. No, but there should be no reason for him to go to war. In time, his blindness won't stop him from much else. I see I've offended you both. I'm sorry. No, you haven't offended me. It was Raymond I was thinking of. Raymond, but I've done my best to help him. That's why I, I asked Sarah to come here. Yes, well, I don't like all of this sneaking around behind his back. Actually, I don't either. I want Raymond to know that we're here and why. If you're not capable of giving him that information, well, then perhaps we should go back to America. Megan! Megan! Right, Julia. I think it'll just take a little time for Gabrielle to accept uh, Max's death and to stop blaming herself for it. It just takes time. How's Al? That's good. It's too young to understand it. Listen, I just want you to know I want to help in whatever way I can. I'll be at the memorial tonight. All right. Yeah, I'll go. Ch I'll go check on Gabrielle. Make sure everything's okay. Yeah, bye bye. I know. I know. It doesn't make any sense. When did you find out? Last night. Oh, I heard it on the news on TV. I really wish you'd called me. I couldn't talk. I couldn't do anything but cry and think about Steve and wonder why God would take Steve and his brother in the prime of their lives. Well, you see, Victoria, the police hall isn't that imposing. No, not nearly as imposing as I remembered it. You're suffering from campaign jitters. No, it's not that. I'm very upset over Max. His death was a terrible shock. I guess because it only serves to remind us how very fragile life is, and not one of us is guaranteed one more second on this earth. I don't think I've ever known a guy who loved life more than Max Holden. No. Megan loved him very, very much. I really think that we should try again to call her right now. Yeah, well, there was a phone in the hall. There you two are. Glad what? I found you. What's wrong? I'm going nuts. I'm trying to get hold of Sarah and Mendora. Have you tried? Yes, we have, but we've no success. I don't like this. Something's gone wrong over there. I know it. Here's what to do when you don't find the rainbows in this time. Here's where you go when it looks like the rain won't win. Don't cry. I'll give you tomorrow. Let me be the one to share it with. And each day that follows. Cause we only have one life to live. I don't know, Brenda. I don't know. It's so bizarre. I don't understand. Max and Steve should have lived to be 110 years old. I'll just never understand that. That's right. And Max, haven't, if it hadn't been for Max, I would have never gotten my baby back from Gabrielle. Come on, sit down, sit down. I'm just really sorry you had to find out all this on the television. I really, really wish you had just called me back. I was ready to come over to your house and tell you about this. What call? Well, I had spoken to some woman. Oh, was she the new babysitter? Yeah? Yeah, well, she told me that you were busy and that you'd call me back. Mm, she never gave me the message. Yeah. She must have forgotten or something. I wish you had called me back. Well, uh, I was afraid you wouldn't talk to me. You know, we've had a lot of ups and downs lately. Dan, there isn't anybody in the world that I'd rather talk to than you. 
except maybe my dad and my oh. brother. Sure, fine, fine. Talk to them instead of me. Fine, sure. Oh, my feelings aren't hurt at all. Look at this. You make me smile. <laughs> I can't believe it. So tell me about the new babysitter. What happened to es Esmeralda? Oh, Esmeralda. Poor Esmeralda. She was at the house. The immigration officers showed up, said that she was an illegal alien, and they well, took her away, and fortunately, Michael came to the rescue again. Oh. Yes? Oh, nothing, nothing. I'm going to be a good boy. Keep my mouth shut. Just go on. So, Michael's cook came over to the house, and she adores Stephen, and she's the new babysitter, okay? Mm -hmm. I'll make sure that she knows that your calls are top priority from now on. Well, thank you. thank you. Look, I know it's been a trying day, but it also happens to be Valentine's Day. And I just happened to uh, get you a little something here. Why are you so worried? Because I can't reach Sarah. But Bo, she only left yesterday. What's what you... You don't think it's strange that all of a sudden they have telephone line problems in a palace? Palaces can't have phone trouble? You think I'm overreacting? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, God. Maybe I am. This thing with Max, I can't believe this even happened. That's got me even more worried about Sarah. She's in a foreign country. You know, that doesn't help matters. Yeah, I know what you mean, Bo. Today was supposed to be our wedding day. Now, I think Sarah would have gone somewhere outside the palace and at least tried to call me. Well, she probably will, but she's probably been very busy with uh, Raymond and just hasn't had a chance. It's Valentine's Day, our wedding. I know Sarah. She's a romantic. She would have made a point of trying to reach me. Bo, you're borrowing trouble now. I know. And even if she doesn't call today, I'm sure she'll be at the airport when you arrive tomorrow. I can't go to Mendora, Roger. Sarah and Megan are on their own. Megan. Megan, please. For my brother's sake, for the sake of all of Mendora, don't leave us now. Then are you willing to tell him that I'm here as his therapist? And that I'm here as his friend? <sighs> I've forgotten how headstrong American women can be. So what's that? A yes or a no? If I could just have a little more time. Apparently, that's a no. Come on, Megan. Let's go. No, wait, wait, wait. All right, all right. I will see to it that Raymond is at the ball tonight. That's what you said yesterday. If that's your idea of some sort of concession. It's just a few more hours. Sarah, I promise, you'll have a chance to see him and talk to him. You can tell him you, you only came to Mendora to assist him with his blindness so that he can rule our nation more effectively. So much depends on this. You would not just be doing it for Raymond. You would be doing it for all of Mendora. I suppose I can go along with that. All right. We'll stay until this evening. Good. But I'm warning you, Roland. If Raymond isn't willing to accept my help, I'm leaving Mendora immediately. I can't help him unless he wants my help. I understand. Good. I'm glad that's settled. And now, since we have a few hours before the ball, I would like to show you something else. Our world-famous shopping district. Uh, thank you, but count me out. I'm going to go back to my room at the palace. I'd like to give Bo a call and see if maybe he can come over here. But you'll be missing something wonderful. Our, our shopping district has a great deal of local color. Thank you. Maybe another time. Megan? No, actually, I think I'll take Roland up on his offer. There's still so much about Mandora I have to learn. Shall we? I'm completely set up here, so as long as we keep Her. in sync, we have continuity. We have a problem. Bert. We need to discuss it immediately. Oh, well, yeah, certainly. Uh, Roy Tolan, this is Bert Winger, nice my campaign manager. Nice to meet you. We can manager. certainly use you as a volunteer. Now, let me borrow the candidate, won't you? Yeah, yeah. He's up a little. Did you catch Victoria Buchanan's press conference? Uh, you mean where the husband came up and said he was 100% behind his wife? Yes, I saw that. Kind of proved my point, didn't it? Which point is that? Well, that it was a lousy and low idea to publicize a photograph showing Vicky and Roger embracing. It wouldn't have been a lousy idea if her husband hadn't flown to the rescue. Oh. And believe me, enough people out there are wondering if his defense is fake. Burke, 
What has this to do with my becoming mayor of Landview? Possibly everything. It could be what puts you over the top. But I don't believe this. I hate this. Vicki Buchanan is a friend of mine. She's a woman of high moral principle. <laughs> not according to the rumors. I will not run a campaign based on disgusting rumor. Herb, have you paid any attention to national elections recently? Did you notice how far other candidates have gotten using my kind of tactics? Uh, yes, I'm not impressed. <laughs> you better get over this attitude quickly, Herb. We're wasting a lot of time on it. You knew my reputation when you hired me. No, no, no. Michael Grant hired you, and he assured me that you would not be running my campaign from the gutter. Excuse me. What are you two doing? Hey. Arguing in front of everybody. You want this appearing on the 6 o'clock news? Uh, Burke and I have a, a fundamental difference of opinion, which we intend to iron out right now. Something about uh, gutter politics? <laughs> the esteemed district attorney does not believe in playing hardball. Well, I've managed to get myself elected district attorney several times without having to resort to innuendo. I will not exploit my opponent's uh, personal life. You can't abide by that, then you can just uh, resign. Michael, please, do something to enlighten Herb or this ship will sink. Burke, where do you come off telling Herb how to run his campaign, hmm? It is up to him. If he wants to play it clean, then you play it clean. But, Michael, that no, was... No, but nothing. I am backing this man because he is honest and above board. So you find a way to win him the election on that basis, or you can take your electoral goods and you can peddle them somewhere else. Why can't you go to Mendora? Because I have to take care of Fraternity Row. Max oh, was the producer. Oh, I forgot about that. There's no one to take his place? Not on a moment's notice. You know, the whole show is devastated. Cast, crew, we canceled taping. Nobody can work. Yes, I really feel sorry for that little boy of his. I know, he's such a sweetheart. Gabrielle was uh, waiting for Max to come back with a license. They were going to get married. I didn't know that. Well, it's just coming out. The people that own the inn where they were staying, they said that uh, Max and Gabrielle were in love. They were going to get married. Miss Megan was right after all. He was in love with Gabrielle Medina. They couldn't have just never get it together. It is tragic. Yeah. Uh, look, I think I'm going to go out and try to get in touch with Megan and Sarah again. I'll give you a yell if I, if I get through. OK. Clint said he was going to try to find Julia to see how Gabrielle was doing. Really? Mm -hmm. Did he say that when he got out of the shower this morning, or what? I, well, I thought maybe he uh, stayed at your house last night with you. Maybe. I don't know. What? <laughs> he called me very early this morning from the carriage house. Okay, yeah. Oh, come Fine. on, you know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, you two supposedly have broken up again for good. Again. It's the third time, is it? Yeah, yeah, and it never seems to stick, Vicky. It's got to be a hell of a message there. Yeah, well, each time one of us makes a gesture and the other one responds, and we patch things up for a while. This time it was Clint, who came to the press conference the other day and saved the day for me. I pray to God that this ceasefire between us will last this time. Well, no matter what he says, you know he loves you. I know he does. And I love him. Why do we get ourselves into this trouble? Yeah. Yeah, why? Vicki, what is it that always gets in your way? Privilege. Do you mean to tell me that every time you come through town, everything just stops, clears out? Well, remind me to take you with me next time I shop Fifth Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite part of Marienstein. Quaint, old-fashioned, some would say, but with an elegance all its own. <laughs> you could be describing your brother. But then again, I'm an old-fashioned type of girl. This is really such a lovely town. It's like something out of a storybook. I'm glad you like Marienstein. I'm only sorry that Sarah didn't join us. 
Yeah, so am I. I really enjoy spending time with my sister. Raymond tells me that, well, that you and he don't get along as well as we do. Well, that's ridiculous. Oh, we have the usual sibling rivalry, but <laughs> really, we're great friends. Really? You've never been jealous that one day he would be king of all of this and you wouldn't? Me jealous of Raymond? No, impossible, impossible. He's a, he's a wonderful man, as you must know. I suppose you got to know my brother quite well when he was in America. Well, like they say in the scandal sheets, we're bosom buddies. <laughs> scandal sheets? Oh, um, it's nothing. Nothing. Raymond is the type of man that any woman could fall for. Any woman? Or you in particular? Are you asking if my intentions are honorable, Your Highness? No, I wouldn't no, presume. No, it's all right. It's OK. As much as I've come to care for Raymond, I know where his loyalties lie. I wouldn't dream of coming between him and his people. Friends we are, and friends we shall stay. That's wise. I would hate to see such a beautiful woman have her heart broken. Alfred. Thank you. thinking of me. Look at that. Well, it was my pleasure. <laughs> Originally, I was going to take the three of us all out to get some burgers and some sundaes, but uh, you know the score. Yeah, we'll be going to a memorial service tonight. Oh, God. <sighs> you want to come with me? Well, I don't think I can. I'm kind of short on doctors here with everyone away on vacation. All right, so you're not sure what time you get out of the hospital. It's okay. I'll just see you over there when I see you. Okay. Great. Oh, by the way, have you guys seen my dad today? No. Why? Well, I was kind of talking to him about something that I don't think you'd be too happy about. Um, well, I talked to him about trying to find you a place that was uh, less expensive off of the Grandview Estate. Dan, but I... I have... knew you wouldn't like this. No. I don't want you and Larry looking for me another place to live. I told you I'm very comfortable there with Stephen at Grandview, and Michael told me yesterday that he isn't going to interfere in my life, just like I hope you and Larry are not going to interfere in my life. Look at me. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, so, like, kind of spare me here and tell me what Michael got you for Valentine's oh, Day. Nothing. Why? Nothing. Well, well. We still got the rest of the day. I'm sure he can find something expensive for you. Well, even if he did, I wouldn't like it as much as I like what you got me. Look at that. He's a wonderful little elephant. And you are a wonderful guy. Well, I only get gifts for wonderful women. I better uh, get to my ward. Thanks for cheering me up. I didn't think anybody could. But you did. <laughs> well, if you want to talk about Max, just let me know. Okay. Well, you go on now. You can do it. I want a full accounting of this embarrassing error, Herr Frank. And I want it now. But your highness, the communique clearly warned of a military coup attempt on the border. General Schumer was flabbergasted, Herman. His troops are totally loyal. There was no signs of mutiny or even discontent. Perhaps Prince Roland ordered you to make up this story, hmm? Prince Raymond, you would Stop! Have... Don't insult my intelligence. I must have deciphered the communique incorrectly. Or perhaps Prince Roland wanted his highness out of the palace for a few days. I, I, I don't understand why. Get out of here, Herman. You make my skin crawl. Hold it. Why do I hear musicians tuning their instruments? It's the Royal Orchestra here for the festivities honoring the opening of the Mandoran Ballet. Festivities? 
There is a pre-ballet reception starting in a few hours, and then after the performance, there will be a grand ball. When did Roland put this together? I am not sure you don't know about it. It seems my brother is taking over the palace. I am sure he expects you to make an appearance. Oh, so Roland's taking over my schedule as well. Well, I have no intention of honoring his agenda. I won't be there. But, Your Highness, it is imperative that you will be there. Thank you. Thank you for showing me around town. That was very nice. It's taken my mind off Raymond for a while. Yes. My brother is on all of our minds constantly these days, isn't he? He is. Look, if there's anything I can do to repay you for all of this, please let me know. As a matter of fact, there is something that you could do. Yes? Should my brother reject Sarah, persuade her not to leave? Well, that's a very tall order. She disrupted her own wedding plans to make this trip, and if her fiancé can't get away from his commitments back home, I'm sure that she's going to want to return back home and join him as soon as she can. Megan, you asked me earlier about my relationship with my brother. Well, all I can tell you is that I love him enough to do anything to make him well, even beg. Please, Megan, don't let Sarah turn her back on him. I really don't know what I can do. My brother needs her. My country needs her. Should Raymond's pride cause him to reject her, don't let her turn away. Whatever it takes, please make her stay. I'll do my best. Well, that's all that I could ask. But I'm warning you, when my sister makes up her mind, she sticks to it no matter what. Oh, I like that trait. I can be determined, too. Very determined. Your Highness. Yes, send the packages to the palace. I hope that Miss Gordon and her sister will be in our country for a long time to come. So. Thank you, that was lovely. It was my pleasure to show you the glories of Marienstein. After you. I do believe you're overstepping your bounds, Thank Herman. you, thank you for reminding him, Klaus. But I'm interested to know why it's imperative that I attend these festivities. Well, Roland believes it is for your own good, Your Highness. After your near accident at the special performance, you would reassure your, your subjects if you make an appearance, if you dance with a few ladies, and if you smile. Do all those and... charming things I was raised to do so well, even if blind? No, 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 I didn't mean you that. You meant but... that Roland is hoping for another disaster. No, not at all. Tell my brother that it's his party. He can be the royal charmer for the night. But you're... Go I... now, Herman! Klaus, what in God's name is going on here? I wish I could figure it out, sir. I suspect that in tomorrow's newspapers, we'll be reading about the paranoid heir to the throne who went racing to the border, only to find that all was well with his troops. If you don't attend the ballet festivities, we shall also read how reclusive you've become. Yes, and I'll bet that's exactly what Roland wants. He's hoping I'll become more paranoid and withdrawn, that I'll throw up my hands and abdicate the throne, and then he'll step in and take over. Well, then he doesn't know you very well, does he, sir? My vision problems are getting in the way, Klaus. And it's allowing my brother to get the upper hand. We must get an expert in to help you. No, no. Later. Right now, I just want to concentrate on getting through the coronation. You haven't been relaxed for weeks. It's beginning to show. I worry about you. Last night, I found a way to unwind. As I lay there trying to sleep, I began to think of Megan. I fantasized living the simple life with her in Landview, Pennsylvania, and then all the tension left my body. God, I wish you were here now. Sir, invite her to Mendora. No, no. It's too dangerous. We know Roland is ruthless. He wouldn't be above using Megan to get to me and to the throne. I don't know why Clint and I are in such bad shape. 
Well, it's not easy just sitting back and watching you two just... Constantly mess things up. I know Clint hasn't been flexible. Oh, that's putting it mildly. Well, he's just trying to hang on to what he's got. If he were trying to hang on to what he's got, then why does he constantly say, it's over, and slam out of the house? This time I was sure we had crossed the line. Well, he does have that temper of his. <laughs> Tell me about it. Bo, it has got much worse. Much worse. I used to be able to deal with it. I can't anymore. It has got to the point where I don't even know what he's going to do at any given moment. He walks into the room and my first instinct is, don't breathe and don't say anything. We have grown too far apart. Well, I know he that he didn't want you to run for mayor, and I know how hard that must be for you to choose not to run. But? I don't know. Sometimes, Vicki, maybe you have to put your personal ambitions second. My personal ambition has always come second, but this time, it's too important. Well, your marriage is important. Yes, I know my marriage is important. I never said it wasn't. And I am by no means ready to give up on it. I never wanted that. Okay. Roger, any luck? Same story. I can get through to Mendora, but not the palace. Did the operator give you any... any time that it would be fixed, maybe? No, she had no idea. They, they don't know what the problem is yet. You know, sometimes during a coup, the phone lines are the first thing to go. Uh. Bo, will you stop it? Megan and Sarah are not stuck in the middle of a coup. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I gotta go to the uh, office. I'll see you tonight, the memorial service. Okay? It was very nice of you to make all the arrangements for that service, you know. Yeah. I know that Gabrielle and Andy appreciate it. That's one favor I wish I never had to do. I'll see you later. Roger, let me know if you get a hold of the palace. Will do. Take it easy, Bob. Bye, hon. You think he's right, don't you? You think there's something wrong over there. No, I don't. But I am worried about you and your speech. You haven't practiced at all, and this hall is going to be soon filled with policemen. Let's go. All right, you sit down, and I will go to the podium, and I will speechify at you. All right. I stand corrected. And my apologies to you, Mr. District Attorney. Apology accepted. Michael, I must say I'm relieved. I, I was afraid you were hoping I'd just let Burke do whatever she wanted. Herb, I'm backing you because I respect you. You have impeccable integrity. Integrity which only became impeccable after the governor's race. I think you've said enough, Burke. No, no, no. I'm glad you brought it up. It happened years ago, Burke, and it was a very different person then. I can't be bought now, and I won't throw away my principles for an office. Okay. Okay, I've gotten the point already. You're Mr. Squeaky Clean, and that's your platform. Just one thing. If Vicki Buchanan does do something unethical or immoral, we're not going to ignore it, are we? Well, just don't you bet on that happening. Herb. Herb, just one thing. Let's not forget that a politician needs a certain killer instinct. <laughs> not in dirty politics, but he needs a fire in the gut. Yeah, hmm? Michael, if you're worried about my being too fond of Vicky to compete, you're wrong. Now, I have to uh, give that speech to the Landview Police Association and we get down to All the right. ball. I'm sorry I can't make it. Well, I'll catch the evening news, though. Oh, that's fine. Uh, Bert? Oh, I have to find my briefcase. I'll meet you in the car in two minutes. What the hell is going on, Michael? Well... I find your confusion rather amusing, Burke, but I don't find your carelessness amusing at all. Of course, I want to manipulate Herb Callison, but I don't want it done overtly. For God's sake, play your dirty games, but do it more discreetly. If a simple photo of Roger Gordon and Vicki Buchanan hugging each other is dirty, then I don't know what to do. All you have to do is be a little subtler with your tactics. And if Herb confronts you again, then leave yourself an out or just play dumb. Okay. I hear you. Good. And don't worry. We will defeat Vicki Buchanan. I don't care what it takes. Now, Max's death must have been devastating to Gabrielle. I think it must have been. I didn't realize it, but she obviously never gave up on him. Hello there. You're Roger Gordon? Yes. I'm Burke Winger. Well, I know, and it's a pleasure. Oh, really? Well, of course. You're one of the most successful campaign managers in the business. In fact, you're coming to this little town to manage a mayoral campaign, it's uh, amazing and terrifying for me. <laughs> well, thank you. But as I understand it, you've got one of the most powerful women in all of Landview running. But, of course, 
we know it's the candidate that really wins, not the behind-the-scenes team. Ah, uh, now, you don't really believe that, do you? No. <laughs> I was just trying to be humble. No way he's good to do I'm that. sorry, no but uh, I'm afraid you two do not look like the biggest rivals in town. Yeah, uh, don't don't let this leak to the press, but Vicky and I just decided that either one of us could run the town. You no, better be uh, careful that our campaign managers don't hear that. Yes. Well, listen, we got a full audience, so uh, why don't we get started? You uh, want to flip a coin for who goes first? No, I will defer to the lovely but formidable lady. Oh. Thank you very much. I don't really know how I can get up there and denounce you, Herb. <laughs> I'm sure you both realize that the police association wields a lot of power. In fact, the candidate that the union sides with is the winner 90% of the time. Oh. Well, in that case, I can't wait to get up there and tell them how wonderful I am. Okay, you do go. that. <laughs> wait a minute, there's entirely too much smiling over here. No, oh, yes. He said it, Herb, I didn't. <laughs> there we have your attention, please. I realize a lot of you have to get back on the beat, so we won't waste any time. Yep. The Police Association is honored to be the first forum for our two mayoral candidates. They will present their views on how to make Landview a better town. Speaking to you first will be Victoria Lord Buchanan. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Well, I must admit to being slightly intimidated up here. After all, my opponent is one of your favorite people, the district attorney. He has certainly done a wonderful job of prosecuting the guilty. He's managed to eradicate a lot of the revolving door uh, policies down at the courthouse. And I admire him very much. He's a wonderful man. So you may ask, what am I doing up here asking for your vote? What can I offer you that Mr. Callison cannot? I think to begin with, I would come to the mayoral office with a fresh view. I think I would come to the office with an open mind. Mr. Callison has been and is a member of the established administration. As a result, he might be somewhat reluctant to butt heads with those in power. And I do believe that your new mayor should be able to fight for you. One of the things that I find appalling is how little your benefits have been increased over the years, especially your survivor benefits. I know the statistics and they have grown over the years. I know that you all have friends and colleagues who have been hurt or killed in the line of duty. Sometimes it seems like it's open season on the police all over this country, doesn't it? And that is true right here in our own little town of Landview. And I think that that is because of the drug culture that has invaded this community. It sells death and destruction, and it has ruined so many families' lives. And since you are all right there in the front line of this urgent and deadly battle, I want to see to it that your benefits reflect this. Your families must be protected. Helga, my dear, you look ravishing. Thank you, kind sir. Did you succeed with Megan Gordon? Or? I'm not sure. Ron, Raymond is back, but he refuses to appear at the ballet or the ball. Why? Because he's convinced that you are plotting against him for the throne. Raymond was always astute. I tried to make him understand that it wouldn't look good if he didn't, didn't show at the festivities. Klaus understands it, so there is still a possibility that he will get him here, but I doubt it. The Gordon sisters will not be put off any longer. If they don't see Raymond tonight, they will leave Mendora. Perhaps Dorian Lord could help us. She's not here yet, is she? No, no, but don't worry. We're aware of her every move.
Oh, come on, Sarah. I know you want to talk to Bo, but you just left him yesterday. Relax, have fun. There's nothing you can do about the phone. So, what are you going to do if Raymond refuses to use your help? Leave. Look, don't you think you could wait a couple of days? You know how blind people are, how they hate to admit their problems. I've already been through this with Raymond. Look, he knows I have a lot to offer him, and if he doesn't want to accept my help, I can't do anything about it. I would suggest to you that I am better qualified to lead the fight uh, against those who would poison our society. I've been spearheading that fight in the courtroom. <laughs> Mrs. Buchanan only joined this war when she found out that her son's school was threatened. This organization and the district attorney's office have been in those trenches for years. Oh, folks, I've learned a lot during my tenure. I am not the novice Mrs. Buchanan is, and therefore I cannot see how the police association could in good conscience endorse a beginner when it is quite obvious to me that they could enthusiastically support a proven winner. Thank you. On behalf of all the members of Landview's police force, I'd like to thank both candidates. Unlike prior elections, I think it's going to be a tough choice. And now, ladies and gentlemen, back to work. I won't lie to you. Press the hell out of me, and I'm plenty of the officers and it's crippled. Thank you, Herb. The problem is they already trust you. It's going to be an uphill battle for me. And now we have to get to the Glendale Mall. Herb, ready to shake some hands and kiss some babies? Oh, I can't wait. Lead on. Bye, Herb. Nice job, Vicky. Listen, Thank I have to run, so uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Roger, good to see you. Ray, Take bye. care. Good luck. Clint is not here. Well, I thought he might be to cover your speech for the bank. Conflict of interest. I assume that he will simply pop in from time to time to assure the public that Mr. and Mrs. Buchanan are still together. Not fun living a lie, is it? No. But I sincerely hope it won't be a lie much longer and that we will get back together again. Well, if that's the case, I, um... I guess I shouldn't give you this Valentine's Day gift. Oh, Roger. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, well, one day I am. Uh, I hope to be able to engrave it to Victoria with all my love. Roger. Oh, Roger. Now, your speech was fantastic. Thank you. I thought Herb's was pretty impressive, too, didn't you? Well, yours was spectacular. You're biased, you know that? It's true. I, I can't be objective about you. I never will be able to. Right. Right. Uh, Benson, I gotta call you back. Uh, Elaine, I'm going to uh, talk to a gentleman out here for a minute. Would you see that I'm not disturbed? What the hell's going on? We have to talk. I thought I made it clear we were not to be seen together. I've been out waiting in the car for an hour. You didn't come out. Now, relax, Michael. I haven't tainted your reputation yet. Hey, stop playing the snob. I have made you a very rich man. I am well aware of that. I just can't be too careful. The last thing I need is headlines about Michael Grant laundering drug money for one of America's biggest mob bosses. There won't be any. And we will continue to make money for each other if we put the proper person in the mayor's mansion. I'm doing everything I can to see that Vicki Buchanan is not elected. Uh, but uh, maybe we're uh, being a little uh, too polite, huh? 
polite? You abduct and threaten her, and you call that polite? What did you have in mind, Carlo? No, Carlo. If Vicky disappears, you know what'll happen? The feds will move in and dig out every kingpin drug dealer in this entire state. Whether they could succeed um, is open for a great deal of discussion between you and me. Just let me say this. If Vicky Buchanan wins, there won't be an argument. She'll end up as uh, part of a sidewalk somewhere. Raymond looks very handsome, doesn't he? It's a little tense to me. Yeah, but handsome nonetheless. Ah, brother. You're back from the eastern border. Yes, and I want to talk to you about a wasted trip. Well, let's not have a business talk now. You have a couple of friends waiting to greet you. They've come a long way. Exactly who are you referring to, Roland? Well, me, for one. Sarah! How are you, Raymond? <laughs> Sarah, my God, what a surprise! I, well, what, what on earth are you doing here? I came here to help you. Roland sent for me, and... Roland? Yes, yes, I invited her. You must admit that you do need a little training. Close. Yes, Your Highness. See that Miss Gordon is put on the first flight back to America. Of course. Uh, Raymond, why? I'm sorry to be rude, sir. Please forgive me. But you must leave. I was afraid this would happen. He simply doesn't want to be helped. I had the distinct impression that he rejected me because of you, Roland. Why is that? Yes, what's going on? Well, well nothing, nothing except the prince's paranoia. He seemed very angry to me, not paranoid. Well, I'm sure that the two of you can convince him that he must have Sarah's help. I'm not going to convince him of anything until I find out what's going on. Where are you going? I'm going to go talk to Raymond. Ah, uh, 